Regarding Islamic dietary directives, the misconception that we are going to discuss today is the prohibition of smoking. Now, there are people who think that the Quran has prohibited smoking in the absolute sense, and therefore a person who, who uh, smokes is actually going against the Quran. And for this, they actually uh, they adduce this directive of uh, prohibition from the Quran from a particular verse. However, if that verse is interpreted in its context, we can safely say that it has nothing to do with smoking at all, and the, wor- the verse itself uh, occurs in the Quran in an entirely different context. And the words uh, themselves which precede that verse are enough to show this. Uh, the words uh, of Surah Baqarah, this verse uh, from which this uh, prohibition is adduced, uh, are, وَأَنْفِقُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِكُمْ إِلَى which means that spend in the way of God and do not uh, cast yourself and do not consign yourself to death by your own hands. Uh, so, uh, if we uh, consider the uh, the part which says uh, spend in the way of God, and then we relate this part to the next part which says la tulkubi aydikum illa this would clearly mean that by not spending in the way of God, do not consign yourself to death. So, therefore, this verse has a very specific context, and it cannot be related to all types of things which can lead a person to death or to something which, is, uh, which, which can be harmful to him. So, what had ha- has actually happened is that people have uh, interpreted this verse in isolation. The words, la tulkubi aidikum ila tahluka, if they are severed from the context, would mean that do not consign yourself to, to death or destruction, which would mean that do not do any activity. Uh, which might lead you to death or destruction, or which might lead you to ruin. And uh, if we, of course, sever this, this verse from its context, it would mean that one should not indulge in any such thing. Then, of course, then the prohibition of smoking can, deri- can be easily derived if uh, this context is not uh, taken into consideration. However, if this context is taken into consideration, we can say that what the Quran is saying is that by desisting from spending in the way of God, Muslims of those times actually were uh, obligated at a certain point of time to wage war against the, the disbelievers, and for this they, had, they were required to spend uh, in the way of God. And uh, the verse says that you have to spend in the way of God, and by not spending, do not consign yourself to that, which, which, which would of course mean that if they abstain from spending, then this would be something uh, which would be tantamount to consigning themselves to death by themselves. So it is absolutely clear that this verse has absolutely no bearing on, uh, on smoking or any other thing. And another thing that needs to be understood here is that the Quran generally uh, discusses things which are moral in nature or which are immoral in nature and has uh, certain things to say about them. For things, for example, which relate to our ill health, uh, which, are, uh, which relate to uh, uh, bad effects of certain things on our health, they have been left by the Quran to our own experience, to our own uh, discretion. We can make laws about them. But the bottom line is, that smoking has not been regarded as something prohibited by the Quran or by the Almighty. Akulu kali haza wa staghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisayr al-muslimina wal-muslimat.